So I thought we could have one last little natter before we hit 2024. So I'm just gonna go through my personal favorite bits of gear from the last year. So I'll start with my backpack. I've actually used quite a lot of different packs over the past 12 months. But my favorite has been the Atom Packs Mo EP60. So I began the year mainly using the 50 litre version of this pack. I used the 50 litre version for my couple of longer distance trails, including the Cumbria Way. But recently I've been re-evaluating the type of camping that I want to do and I want to just enjoy it more, take a few extra luxuries and having the extra capacity in this 60 litre pack allows me to do that. So it's pretty much the same as the 50 litre version, just a little bit larger in capacity. It's a very comfortable pack, but it has been made to my torso length. Plenty of storage in these stretchy pockets, bungee cords everywhere. There's a strap on top so you can put things like um, closed cell foam mats if you want to, or a beer canister if you live overseas. I do like the roll top packs as well. Although these materials are waterproof, the pack itself I would just say is water resistant because you know, all of these stitching things are not, they're not tape seamed. Loads of room inside. You've definitely got to be really into your backpacking though to shell out this kind of money when something like a, an Osprey Exos will do virtually the same job, although that is more mass produced. Right, let's move on to the next bit of gear. My favorite tent of 2023. And relatively new to me, last couple of three months. It's the Hilleberg Gunner. My original plan was to get another solo, but I had my head turned by this one. I remembered why I got rid of the solo and it's because it wasn't quite big enough inside. So I messaged Todd from Going Solo, he's got both the tents and he rightly said that the Solo is more storm worthy. But I don't plan on going out in 60 mile an hour winds and I have upgraded my poles to the 10 millimeter poles which are for the black label Stiker as well as adding a few extra guy lines. So the Una has quite a small vestibule area but it does have a little trick up its sleeve where you can create a virtual vestibule by unclipping the, the inner in one corner a little bit. I've actually found that that works perfectly for me. It gives me loads of room for getting changed out of my wet gear. There's acres of space for cooking to put your backpack and it still leaves you loads of room inside the tent. But the main thing for me is it's given me that feeling again that I got when I got my Hilleberg Solo. There's a, there's a big trust there that the tent is not gonna let me down um, in whatever the conditions are. Put a massive smile on my face. As with all tents, it's not perfect, but I've made a few mods already and there's a few more on the way, including a mesh in there so I can use it all year round. Right, this one was tough. My favorite stove and cook set. So there's actually two that is on the list at the moment, um, which I have been using the most anyway, and that I've enjoyed using the most. I'll go with my cup. It's always gonna be this one. I've had it, God knows how long. Sea to Summit X mug, folds flat, weighs nothing. The only downside I can see with it is that sometimes in really cold weather, your drink gets cold quick. So the stove that I've probably used the most all this year around, and I've enjoyed using the most, is the x boil. Really simple. It's just a sheet of, I think this one's stainless. Little alcohol burner goes inside. These little arms act as your pot support. Fuel goes in there. Go on, I may as well show you. Just because it's Christmas holidays. There we go. And that is it. Your pot will just go on top. And this has been great. It's really, really lightweight. Perfect if you're using dehydrated meals. Anyone else get that, by the way? You know when you leave a gas canister in? <laughs> Let's scrub that out when I get home. This system's been great. So I can use it with any pot that I've got. I've got quite a few that's got around a hundred millimeter diameter. Just sits on there, boils water. So it's great for dehydrated meals and uh, small boil in the bag stuff. Also, these little cutouts here means I can put my frying pan on top as well. I've actually been using 
the fire maple one, the non-stick version. Been really impressed with it. Lighter weight. Really good handle and it's deep. Um, the jet boil one that again is one of my favourites. It's not quite as deep as this, so I, I can get some good amount of food in there. I know non-stick coatings aren't for everyone, but this one's really good. Doesn't come with a spatula though, so I've just chucked this one in with it. Does a job anyway. Get yeah, everything so compact with this. In fact, you can almost take this as an additional backup stove if you wanted to, because it just fits inside a pot. Doesn't take up any space at all. And this can go in any little bag. You just need a little bit of fuel, which I usually take in one of these Trangia bottles now. For the last couple of months, I've been using this. A Fire Maple Mars, I think it's called. Picked it up as a bargain on eBay, of all places. Problem is, this is way too heavy for, for some circumstances. I don't know what it weighs. I don't care, to be honest. Um, but I like the fact that I can put a large gas canister in it. I like the volume of this pot. So it's about, I think it's 1.25 litres. So I can get some larger boil in the bag meals. So I bought one of those vacuum sealer things so I can make meals at home and then just put them in there, boil it up, and then I've got a decent quality meal. I vowed to stop using dehydrated meals. If I'm doing multi-day trips, then I may need to use them again. But the burner on this, I really like. I wish that there was a smaller version, a smaller lighter weight version, something like the, the jet boil stash, but with one of these radiant burners. Let's see if I can get it lit up and show you. This is another one of my favorite bits of gear. Soto, extendable torch, it's like a mini blow torch on the end. I don't think this will pick it up on the camera, but it's really good for lighting in windy conditions. That is lit, chucks out loads of heat and that will glow red in a moment. But it makes it really, really wind resistant. So it's not just about the flame, it's the some sort of built-in radiator. I'm not sure how it works, but the um, heat sink on the bottom of there, combined with that means that you get a really efficient stove and it boils up your water really quick. So although this is a bit too heavy, the sort of meals I'm going to be cooking, it makes, makes it perfect with this pot. And it does come with this little pan support as well, which means that I can fry my steak. It's incredibly sturdy, this. Been so impressed. I do like the fact that it's so low to the ground. It's not going anywhere. I've had people telling me for a couple of years to try the fire maple stuff, but I've resisted. I am a Jetball fanboy after all, but this has been brilliant so far and I will be continuing to use this for quite a few trips in 2024. Before this goes back in the bag, a few honourable mentions of other little gadgets that I like. I do like this bag, I um, can't remember who sent it now, Logia Gear sent it to me. Um, I'll put a link in the description. <laughs> Never thought I'd have anything with my name on it, apart from school books. Um, this light, a bio light, some 250 model, I don't know to be honest, but uh, overkill for camping, but it is brilliant for lighting things up for me filming. Um, you can get some really much better images when you've got a decent light when you're filming in the dark, so that's why I, I love that so much. Um, power banks, Goal Zero one, 10,000 milliamp. I'm still using my O-Light, H1R Nova. God, I've had that five years now, and it's a brilliant bit of kit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My sleeping pad, um, come lantern from Flextail. 
that goes over over me again that's really good for lighting things up in the tent for me filming and it also doubles up as an inflator for my sleeping pad and let's not forget me Zolio satellite communicator this is great for when I've got no signal I hope that I never ever have to press that SOS button um, but it's like an insurance policy for me as well as being able to just let the missus know that I'm all right But the biggest gadget shout out has got to go to my camera gear. After years and years of GoPro, I switched over to the DJI Action 4. So much more reliable. You get the quick charging battery case, all of that kind of stuff with it. So it now teams up wirelessly with the DJI Mic 2. These aren't out yet unless you buy the um, Pocket 3 camera. Although so far I'm not really getting on with that camera. Right, Soto folding table. This is one of those nice to have things. I've had tables before and then just stopped taking them. I didn't think that they were worth the effort, but this, it just flips out. It's like engineering origami excellence. But it gives me a really stable platform to put my cup on, my stove on. Sometimes you're pitching up on rough like this. I mentioned at the start that that 60 litre pack now means I can take a few luxuries. Makes camping more enjoyable. Camping is what you want it to be. It doesn't have to be rough in it. Right, there's only really the sleeping kit to go apart from a few honorable mentions for some of the clothing. So I've made the transition to zero drop shoes or barefoot shoes. I would say that these boots and the Lone Peaks have been my biggest success of 2023 when it comes to the equipment that I use. It feels like it's taken 10 years off my knees and my hips, so it's been a real winner for me anyway. My favorite waterproof jacket has been the Outdoor Research Helium. Although I wouldn't say that it is for Scotland's worst conditions. After all, it is a lightweight jacket, but because it's breathable, I can wear it as a wind shell as well. So um, like today, we're not any rain, but it's keeping that cutting wind off me and I'm not sweating inside or anything like that. So perfect for, it's a perfect all round jacket for me anyway, for most of the year. And for insulation, my favorite has been this, the, the Rab Mythic Ultra down jacket. It's got the Nick Wax hydrophobic down in it. It's really lightweight, but the Pertex is very delicate as well. I've already had to do a little bit of a repair with Tenacious Tape. Lovely and warm, but do have to be careful with it. Right, we're on to the last bits now, sleeping kit. My favorite sleeping pad 2023 has been this, the Cita Summit Comfort Light. It's not the warmest pad. It is not the widest pad that I've got, but it's the one that I've slept the best on because it's been the most comfortable. Those little like air sprung pockets or whatever they call them. I don't get any pressure points on this, whereas some pads I'm waking up in the night with a, an arm that's fallen asleep or something. The last few camps I've been using my Thermarest and it's just not as comfortable as this. I don't sleep as well. Also, it doubles up as a seat really easily just by folding it in half. It inflates the quickest and it seems to hold air better than any other pad that I've used to. Although I'm not sure it's gonna hold up to really cold weather unless I stick one of these, or a larger version of the Z Lite underneath the pad as well. I'm gonna try it out in the next camp anyway. So, sleeping bag or quilt. This has been my favorite of 2023. I have tried lots of different sleeping bags and quilts. I do keep coming back to a quilt all the time. This is the Thermares Vespa, zero degrees comfort rating. If you want to, you can really crunch this down. To next to nothing. Let me put it at the side of my, my X cup, just to give you some sort of comparison. I definitely don't need it squashed down like that in this 60 litre pack though. This is the quilt that I took with me on the Cumbia Way. Worked really, really well. The uh, hydrophobic down that it's got inside as well. You know, it was perfect for multiple day trips. My biggest bugbear with quilts though is the price of them. So I don't understand why a quilt should be more expensive than a sleeping bag. It's much easier to manufacture, easier to sew, easier to fill, less material. But you seem to be paying more money for a lot of them. I don't, I don't understand it. I just want to finish off by 
saying a big thank you from both me and Joe for all of your support over the last year again. We will be backfiring on all cylinders in 2024, so plenty more adventures to come. Loads more gear to see. Thanks again for watching. See you next year.